Welcome back to this week's edition of the Risk Spotlight Operational Risk News Update. My name is Emily Jones, and today I'll be bringing you essential updates and insights from the world of operational risk, drawn from the past week. All information shared here is sourced from the Risk Spotlight portal, the premier forward-looking service dedicated to operational risk content. Let's get started. The U.S. Department of the Treasury has released a request for information, or RFI, about the use of artificial intelligence in the financial services sector. This highlights that the Treasury is trying to catch up and learn more about how AI is being used in the industry. I am highlighting this as government agencies and regulators may launch similar initiatives in other jurisdictions in the coming months. The RFI covers a wide range of topics, from anti-money laundering and fraud prevention to fair lending and consumer protection. They're particularly interested in understanding how AI can help create a more inclusive and equitable financial system. The Treasury has laid out 19 detailed questions, touching on things like the benefits and risks of AI for low to moderate income consumers, how financial institutions are managing AI-related risks, and concerns about data privacy and fraud. One of the key things to note is that the Treasury is taking a broad view of what counts as a financial institution for this RFI. They're not just looking at traditional banks, but also fintech companies and pretty much any business that provides financial products or services under regulatory authority. They're seeking input from a wide range of stakeholders, including consumer advocates, academics, and nonprofits. The next update highlights a clever social engineering technique that malware peddlers are increasingly using to trick users into installing malware. The trick involves presenting users with a fake error message, either through a website or an HTML document delivered via email. These messages warn of a problem and offer a seemingly legitimate solution, such as installing a root certificate or updating the DNS cache. The cleverness of this tactic lies in its ability to present a problem and solution simultaneously prompting users to take action without fully considering the risks. What's particularly alarming is the complexity and sophistication of these attacks. The attack chain requires significant user interaction, but the social engineering is so well-crafted that it often convinces users to follow through with the steps. Given the challenges in detecting these sophisticated attacks, the responsibility often falls on the users themselves. If browsing protections and email filters fail, users become the last line of defense. Organizations are advised to train their employees to recognize and report suspicious activities. The next update highlights findings on burnout of the U.S. cybersecurity professionals in a new report titled, Building a Firewall Against Cybersecurity Burnout. A whopping 84% of cybersecurity workers are experiencing stress, fatigue, and burnout. It's not just a personal issue, it's hitting businesses hard too. In the US alone, medium to large enterprises are losing about $626 million a year in productivity due to these mental health challenges. Can you believe that 74% of cybersecurity pros globally have had to take time off because of work-related mental health problems? Now here's where it gets interesting. There's a big disconnect between what the higher-ups think and what's actually happening on the ground. While 90% of CISOs are worried about the impact of stress and burnout on their teams, only 47% of CEOs share the same level of concern. And get this, business leaders think the main reason for overtime is the increasing number of cyber threats, but the professionals themselves say it's more about the sheer workload and pressure to perform outside their skill set. The next update highlights concerning findings on disability in workplace covering 5 million employees in the U.S. So get this, half of all employee disabilities are actually related to mental health. A whopping 51% of employees with disabilities reported a mental health condition like depression or anxiety as their primary disability. And here's the kicker, only 1% of employees have visible disabilities, while 6% have invisible ones. It's clear that mental health is a huge issue in the workplace, but it's often hidden from view. Now. Let's talk about how this is affecting different groups. Depression cases are surging among women and younger workers, with 60% of cases found in women across all age groups, and 38% in workers aged 20 to 29. And it's not just depression. 
anxiety has skyrocketed to become the number one mental health issue in the American workforce. The impact is real, folks. Nearly one in three employees say their job frequently causes them stress, and 35% report that their job negatively affects their mental health. Oh, and mental health-related leaves of absence? They're up a staggering 300% from 2017 to 2023. It's clear that we've got a serious situation on our hands, and it's time for employers to step up their game when it comes to supporting mental health in the workplace. This can include offering mental health resources, training managers to recognize and address mental health issues, and fostering a culture where employees feel safe to disclose their disabilities. By taking these steps, companies can not only improve the well-being of their employees, but also enhance overall productivity and job satisfaction. It's a win-win situation that benefits both the employees and the organization. The next update is from Germany, where a significant labor dispute is brewing as around 200,000 bank employees are pushing for substantial pay increases to counteract rising living costs. The unions are demanding pay hikes between 12.5% and 16%, citing the bank's substantial profits amid higher interest rates. However, the Employers Association has only offered an 8.5% increase, which the unions have deemed insufficient. This disagreement has already led to strikes by some Commerce Bank employees, and more strikes are likely before negotiations resume in July. The backdrop to these demands is Germany's recent economic situation. Although inflation has decreased from nearly 7% in 2022 to 2.4% 2 in May 2024, this rate is still higher than what many Germans are accustomed to. The unions argue that the current inflation rate, combined with the bank's profitability, justifies their demands for higher wages. The negotiations are crucial as they affect over 140,000 employees at major banks like Deutsche Bank and Commerce Bank, with separate talks for more than 60,000 staff at state-affiliated banks starting soon. The next update is from Hong Kong, where the Office of the Privacy Commissioner for Personal Data has just released the first AI-focused personal data protection framework in the Asia-Pacific region. This new framework is a comprehensive guide designed to help organizations navigate the complex landscape of AI and data protection. It's particularly aimed at those just starting their AI journey, offering a set of best practices and recommendations for procuring, implementing, and managing AI systems that use personal data. This includes both predictive AI, which forecasts future outcomes, and generative AI, which creates new data sets. What's really noteworthy here is that this framework marks a significant milestone for data protection in the APAC region. Although it's not legally binding, it offers a solid blueprint for organizations to ensure they are handling personal data responsibly as they integrate AI into their operations. For those developing AI models in-house, the regulator recommends referring to the 2021 AI guidance. This new framework is a big step forward in setting standards for AI and data protection, and it's something that organizations in Hong Kong and beyond should definitely pay attention to. The next update highlighting findings from the 2024 State of API Security Report, published by Salt Security. The report highlighted significant issue facing enterprises today, the lack of visibility and management capabilities of APIs, which is leaving them vulnerable to severe attacks. 29% of respondents admitted their companies do not adequately flesh out API requirements and documentation, while 25% believe their APIs lack sufficient security documentation. 23% reported experiencing a data breach due to vulnerabilities in production APIs, and 38% encountered some form of data exposure from an API breach. Alarmingly, API security incidents have more than doubled over the past year, driven by the rapid increase in API usage, which has expanded the attack surface for malicious actors. And there you have it, a whirlwind tour of last week's operational risk landscape. If you want to read more about the topics I have covered and review additional content on emerging operational risk topics, then please log into the Risk Spotlight portal if you are a subscriber or go to riskspotlight.com to sign up for a free trial. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, Stay safe and keep those risks in check.